Thank you. Uh, Hi, so I'm Rita Carvalho from University of Coimbra. Um, I will present some preliminary work for a project that was recently funded that will start next October. Uh, so I'm a civil engineer. I do this with, uh, with uh, some colleagues of chemical engineer department. And um, this project is about aquaculture and uh, is with the universities of um, Coruña, uh, Rouen, and, and Dublin. So the idea is um, to model a aquaculture tank with a aerator. Uh, normally, the traditional aquaculture have a, a Taiwan uh, aerator paddle. And here is the, the mouth of Mondego uh, near Figueira, Figueira da Foz. Uh, and here are located uh, some aquaculture uh, like this. So in, in aquaculture tanks, um, it's very important the oxygenation, uh, dissolved oxygen for the fish survive. Um, and um, is the second cost um, after the, the feed of the fish. Uh, normally, we need um, aerators, but the process is like uh, empirical. We put the aerators working, we measure more or less two times a day to see if the oxygen is okay. And uh, we, we decide um, if we put working or not. Sorry. <laughs> this is uh, just to, to show the, uh, the aerator working. Uh, here is a tank uh, that is one of these, is the eighth tank here uh, where, where I show. So the... Um, the paddle is more or less like that. Um, and uh, we, we did the geometry based on uh, photogrammetry. So we took a lot of photos, but uh, this photo, we focus in a specific paddle because it's the most important thing. But uh, if we made the um, automatic geometry, we still have a lot of uh, noise in the image. Uh, so we we provide this for not having all the dimension and we work, uh, we still did the, the geometry um, for one paddle. We replicate for eight. Uh, also, we construct the, the rotor and the flotation. We, then we copy three times and did the static part uh, and the, the rotation part. Uh, so for... The first uh, simulation, we did the, not a real tank, just a block. Uh, and we um, consider like an inlet here, a outlet here, and the seam trees on both parts here. Uh, and in the middle, to simulate just uh, half. And then we have just the bottom, like wall. And then inlet, outlet, seam tree, and um, the rotor and the structures are also walls. But then as we don't have um, results, experimental results, we did another geometry based on a paper. And uh, we had like a swimming pool here with the aerator. This aerator is Taiwan as well, but has just six paddles. Uh, and so we replicate six and include just two fluctuators and to include this. For this, we have just walls and the uh, atmosphere, atmospheric. So the mechanism, we have a height dynamic and turbulence flow. Uh, we have uh, like uh, droplets uh, in the air that takes some air inside the, the, the swim. And then we have uh, water dispersed in water. Uh, so this is a multi-phase complex. We have a lot of uh, breaking the air. Uh, the droplets also um, can uh, join. And we have some mechanism that uh, we base here in Schengen and Zhang. So for the solvers, uh, we can look this in a simpler way, like VOF, but uh, of course VOF we just is not a real multi-phase flow, so we just have water, air, and the surface between, and uh, we can have like uh, subgrid models, um, Elderian and 
Eldrin floods, so multi oiler foam or two phase oiler foam. And then we can also have oiler lagrangian and full results. For this study, I just look at the simpler models. And so the interfoam has the, the mass and momentum conservation. We had a, a K omega SST. And we have the, the advection for the, the, the volume of fluid function with the compressive flow. For the air interfoam, this was based on uh, LOPSAIL 2016 that implemented this model that is uh, based on MA models um, in open foam. Uh, so we join another equation that uh, is a... Um, like a vex equation for the phase flow, but instead is a, a mass conservation for, for the gas. Uh, we need to calculate the velocity and the, um, the source term. The velocity could be uh, equal to the liquid phase or have a relative. And this is in literature, uh, depending on, on the bubble uh, dimension. For the source, we can calculate the water that is crossing the surface. For this, we we consider a, um, a zone near the, the surface uh, when we define uh, some uh, the, the original position, um, a thickness uh, related to the, the scale of the, the, the problem. And then we can calculate the, the source term. Of course, we can have this to have a, a, like a bulking phenomenon. The two or multi-phase other form, we have um, a pair of uh, Navier-Stokes, like mass and momentum equation for each uh, phase. We also have an energy equation and uh, we don't need to calculate velocity, um, the free surface here. Of course, here the, bet the, the air is better described. We can include uh, like drag, lift, uh, surface tension in, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that could be uh, considered. So for the drag is also, also in, um, in phase system in two phase other form or multi-phase system, we define the, the coefficient that uh, are uh, normally in the tutorials, but uh, if we consider uh, this kind of parameters for the diameter of bubbles and and the blending and so on. The lift uh, is considered like as a constant coefficient and also for vitral mass. So in resume, we we consider interfoam that is one, two, and three equation, air interfoam that we had the fourth for the gas phase. And two phase other foam and multi phase other foam that we have uh, just one and two for each phase and the energy if we consider two phase flow that is uh, uh, compressive and um, uh, uh, then okay uh, actually I had to a isothermal uh, condition so I I did not consider this equation uh, as as a whole. So we start to do a mesh um, in the real aquaculture uh, tank. So we can have this uh, uh, very thin there. And the interfoam, um, we had uh, with a higher mesh, we can have some bubbles here. Of course, not, not showing just after uh, 0 0.5, but 0 0.1, that is normally in hydraulic structures where we consider the, the surface position. And um, here, in, outside of this uh, box, we, we have not physically uh, air here. So of course, these waves are similar for different mesh, but for the air, we, we, we must have must refiner mesh. So as I said, uh, we try to do some results that we already have. So the tank is the geometry too. Um, we, we did different meshes. The air interfoam we already um, 
run for three mesh, the two phase and multi-phase other form, not yet. So here for uh, one under, we have like this, we refine this part uh, here in a box, also here. After that, we conclude that this box was too small, so we enlarged it. Okay. So this is multi-phase other foam. Uh, we ran like uh, 12 seconds. Um, and uh, we can see uh, that this is represented, like I said, 0 0.1 for alpha water. Um, and this is the, um, the velocity. Okay. So if you, and we analyze the, the result, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, we did a cut here in 1.5, that is in the middle of the back paddle, and the other is 2.1, is in the end of this first paddle here. Okay, uh, so for multiphase other foam, this is also like represented alpha water uh, um, more than zero, 0 0.1, and then um, this is graded like water to air, and here are two blocks. Also 0 0.5 is in the middle of these paddles, and the one is in the middle of the all the aerator here. So we have these results for two seconds, and for 12 seconds, we have similar results. For two-phase other foam, uh, we did also uh, this, we have similar results, quite different here. And for air interfoam, uh, we have more spread here. For air interfoam, we can have alpha water here and we can calculate SG, that is the part where the source term is more. So we can locate the parts where the air enters the, the tank. Okay, so this is a, a finer mesh, but we don't have uh, enough time. Uh, so we have here some location of this, and even a finer mesh, we can have uh, results here, but we are still far from there. I can show here when the, the block, the dimension is here, and we go out the, the bubbles, uh, are not physical equal. So we did it, uh, uh, the block smaller, the smaller block uh, more longer, and then we, we can have this. Okay, so this, as I said, is preliminary results. Uh, we have like uh, some uh, 1.5 in the middle of the, the paddles. We have four, two phase other foam and air interfoam, not final results. But um, nevertheless, we can say that uh, interfoam is not able to describe the air interim in, in the tank. Um, for multiphase other foam, we reach similar results between two seconds and uh, 12 seconds. All models apparently show similar results, but of course we have to, to compare better. Uh, the air interfoam show that uh, is very sensitive to mesh. Uh, is also um, let us know the, the part where the source term enters. And um, uh, we, can, we can follow the model. Of course, we have a lot of work to do. So the, this project will start in 1 October. If everyone wants to, to, um, to give a comment, you will be welcome. But uh, it's not the air environment that interests us. Interests dissolve oxygen in the tank. Uh, of course, we still have to do a, a properly mesh independent study, um, the comparison with the different models. And uh, we want to, um, to optimize this because this is like an empirical process. Um, and uh, for that, we, we also want to have uh, simpler models where we can uh, include the large eddy simulation, uh, in a, a kind of subgrid model, so a lot of work to do. Uh, finally, I want to show the, the foam Iberia, that is a group that we create in between Portuguese and, um, and Spanish foamers. Uh, it started in Quimbra in 2017. 
after being in Guimarães, a Portuguese team. And uh, it was in last year after the last Iberian group in Cantabria that um, we start to talk with Anna and Julian and uh, we had the, this, this idea for this proposal. And uh, the next one will be in Guimarães again and you will be welcome because we accept people from outside the Iberian group. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, there is a, a dynamic mesh. Um, we have a MRF rotation. So if you if you look at the open form tutorial, you have a kind of a room with um, with a, a fan that is uh, over the top and then uh, we so we MRF. yes mrf yes okay so for the drag coefficient um we start um, to the the steer tank tutorial as well uh, and um, we look at the uh, with this with the that paper. Uh, where is it? Okay. okay sorry, uh, the mechanism. Uh, in this paper, it is described how to calculate the drag, the lift, and and the force. And we adapt this for the tutorial, and we choose the the different models. Uh, but uh, we we just use that, and we are we are also using in the steer tank to have some conclusion. But as I said, this is preliminary. A lot of things has to be analyzed. Thank you. Of the, of the mesh, uh, you're saying you are talking about interform. Is that it? Yes. Yes, because um i don't think so because we have a very thin mesh and the, all the the part is rotating so we we don't have uh, that that um, uh, that problem. I, I said that Interform is not able because we still have a lot of um, uh, the, the bubbles and the air bubbles are very small. And if we analyze the model, we of course, we are not looking at dissolved oxygen, but we looking at the alpha water and we just see water and air, nothing mixed. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. So, hello. My name is Ricardo Ribeiro. I'm a PhD student at the University of Min, the Institute for Polymers and Composites, and under the supervision of Dr. Miguel Nobre and Dr. Ricardo Costa. And today I will present some of the work that we have been developing uh, with the title Phase Fraction Based Boundary Condition for Injection Molding Simulation. Okay, so here's the outline of my presentation. First, I'll do an introduction on the topic of injection molding. I'll talk a bit about my motivations and objectives. Uh, and then I'll show you the computational methods, in this case, basically are boundary conditions for simulate the injection molding process. 
and some case studies and results analyzed, and finally the conclusions. So, in the injection molding process, basically, you have polymer granules that fall by gravity into uh, an upper. They fall into an heated cylinder. Then they are pushed by a, ro a rotating screw, and they become melt uh, as they, they come along to the front of to near, near the, the mold cavity. Then the, the melt is injected. You have cooling system uh, in the mold generally with water channels, okay? The screw is now pushing the, the melt, then it will start dosing for the next injection. And uh, the plastic part is then ejected and the, the cycle is, is repeat. So it's an uh, automatic process. Okay, so why do you want to use computational methods to simulate the, this process of injection molding. Basically, because we aim the optimization of the tool geometry, and in this case, the tool is our mold, and processing conditions can be temperature, pressure, velocity, etc. And the, the, the mold was basically created by tradition with using uh, the trial and error approach, which is quite expensive and inefficient. Usually, people used to have a lot of trials be before uh, before have a suitable mold for, for the process. So uh, we, we think we have sure that computational methods can uh, reduce the number of iterations. Okay, so uh, generally, these are the standard boundary conditions when simulating injection molding. Uh, uh, for pressure and velocity. For velocity, we have generally a fixed uh, velocity at the inlet and null no gradient at the outlet, and uh, no slip boundary condition at the walls, which is uh, no velocity in all directions. And this is the Dirichlet-Neumann boundary conditions. For pressure, we have at the in inlet uh, null no gradient, then we have fixed pressure at the outlet and null no gradient uh, at the walls. This basically are the generic boundary conditions, but there is a problem. Uh, I want to fill completely a geometry like this using uh, Interform, for instance. And as you can see at the walls with the no slip boundary condition, uh, it's not possible to fill the geometry, uh, completely fill the geometry. You can say that, okay, you can use permeable boundary conditions. Yes, I could use it, but I have a lot of mass lost and I don't want it. I can have bits, uh, a bit of mass lost in the outlet, but not in all the walls. So this is a problem. Also, uh, at the industry, people always say me, but I use commercial software and this is always perfect and everything is filled and I, I don't have this problem. So we, we try to we try to find a solution for this. So our objectives, my objective was to propose a new boundary condition, compare it with an no-slip boundary condition using Interform Solver, which is the bottom of fluid method, and two phase involved, all obviously are polymer and air. In this case, uh, polymer was modeled as, uh, with constant viscosity and density, which, uh, as you might know, does not happen in reality because polymers are viscoelastic materials, but this is just for sake of simplicity for our first case studies. So uh, also uh, in the future, I want to calculate residual stresses in injection molding, and they are caused by deflection of the parts uh, due to temperature gradients during the cooling stage, and I need to have completely filled parts. Uh, otherwise the results won't be uh, good at all. So that's why I don't want to use and the no slip boundary condition. So the first trial that we had was, okay, we can apply no slip boundary condition when we have a polymer phase 
And in this case, we consider to have, having polymer phase if our phase fraction is higher or equal 0.5. And then I can use slip boundary condition only for the air. In this case, I have no velocity, normal, no, no normal velocity, and I have just tangential velocity. So in our first study, we had an abrupt change between no slip and slit slip. However, this was this led to convergence problems, so we had to address the problem in another way. Okay, so in order to avoid this abrupt change, we try to use a function depending on phase fraction alpha that will perform the change between slip and no slip. And we use a uh, tangent hyperbolic function. Okay. So uh, we tried with different configurations for the, for the function. And we reached the conclusion that the later is the change between uh, no slip and slip, the better results we've obtained for the phase fraction at the walls. You can see that in this case is the configuration A. Now you can say, okay, but this is almost abrupt. And you said that abrupt change wouldn't uh, would lead to convergence problems, okay? But I try to push maximum the, cur the curve uh, and I, I check whether it where converge or not. So in this case, it is still converging and I had the better results for the phase fraction. So how works the boundary condition? Basically, I took the value of f from the hyperbolic function, and I multiply it by the mean between the velocity at cell center and the transformation vector of the velocity. That's green vector, OK? So at the end, we will have only tangential velocity. So when we have phase fraction equals to 1, for instance, our f is equals to 0, so we have uh, no slip boundary condition. <clears throat> Our first case study was the filling of a simple cavity in a fully orthogonal mesh. And here are the results for the phase fraction at the boundaries. As you can see in the new boundary condition, the phase fraction is almost equal to one in all the, the along the channel length which does not happen with a no-slip boundary condition. Another aspect that we analyzed was the difference in pressure between the two boundary conditions. So ideal, ideally, we don't want the pressure to be uh, much difference between the two boundary conditions because we could affect the physics of the problem. However, we had a slight difference in pressure, okay? This is not the ideal case, but we'll try to fix this, this problem. In terms of the velocity profile, uh, th there is a graph with the velocity profile in the last time step of the simulation, and it is in the middle of a channel. The velocity profile is quite similar. The second case study was the filling of a tensile specimen uh, geometry. This, this geometry is quite common in polymer engineering because we use it to perform tensile mechanical tests. So in this case, uh, the mesh had tensiles in thickness direction in order to well represent the case. And as you can see, the value of the phase fraction is much higher in the with a new boundary condition. Calculation time is very similar. It was a bit faster with a new boundary condition. And again, we have some differences in the pressure drop that we need to address. Uh, also, the objective of this case study was to check how the boundary condition behave in with convergent and divergent zones. And we have almost phase fraction equal to one in all the geometry. You can see in the divergent zone that we have some cells with 0 0.7, 0 0.8, but we don't have that problem 
that happens with the no, no slip boundary condition that kind of waves well, Okay, another case study was the filling of a disk at the center. Here, the objective was to check if the boundary conditions uh, performed well with non-orthogonality. In the left, you can see an almost fully orthogonal mesh. <laughs> and in the right, you can see that we have a mesh with more higher non-orthogonality. In both cases, the values of phase fraction are quite similar and the boundary condition performs uh, quite well. The last case study is the filling of a shoe sole. In this case, a more complex geometry. And here, we don't have a phase fraction equals to one in all, all the domain. We have some zones with 0 0.6, 0 0.5. And in this case, if we don't try to change the location of inlets and outlets, the boundary condition for itself will not solve the problem of entrapped air, okay? So as conclusions, this proposed boundary condition is able to fill boundary cells when simulate injection molding with half higher than or equal 0 0.5. The velocity profile is similar to the one obtained with no slip boundary condition. We have some differences in pressure measurements that we need to address. And in more complex geometries, we need to take care about the proper location of inlets uh, or outlets. Otherwise, the cells with the entrapped there may be there. Okay. I would like to thank Portuguese Foundation for Science and Technology for funding my PhD grant. And last slide is about for my video that Rita already mentioned. So uh, we hope to see you uh, in Portugal, second and third of November. And we will have uh, courses and also talks. So you are all invited to be there. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't get Never sleep, totally sleep. Uh, okay, I never, I never. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, uh, actually... I never tested, I, I don't know. Maybe I can. For? Um, for for the volume fraction, I use I don't I I, I use the no 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 I use no grade. Well, no grade I just I just applied but no I just this boundary condition is I only apply for velocity not for yeah, not for. Okay, I never tested with contact angle. Okay, I, I actually I thought about it, but I, I didn't study it yet, but I I could take a look, yeah. So uh, by using the interphone, I never ran into this issue of the days of the solution. But also, I have just water, so I can use the hands for the It may be. Maybe due to be scored, yeah. Okay.
but in all the no. cases that okay, sorry. No, I was just saying that all the cases that I run, I had that I had that problem. But maybe if I increase a lot viscosity, maybe it will change. No, our idea is to, we want to keep the parabolic profile of polymer injection, okay? But I didn't perform any 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 tests, but the idea is to keep it. So uh, otherwise, we should we I could lose just the slip boundary condition. But we want to keep the parabolic profile of of polymer. That's the important part. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. I'm Mohammed Hassan Asghar, and today I will present my work on betting simulations using the unstructured volume of fluid method. And before going forward, I would like to thank my colleagues and supervisor, Tomislav Marek, Mathis Frike, and Professor Dieter Bothe from TU Darmstadt. And as you know, the betting processes can be observed everywhere uh, in daily life, uh, in many applications, natural applications, and in uh, in some industrial uh, processes also, such as coating, printing, raindrop impacts, and uh, in medical fields where drug delivery is the uh, major uh, application of uh, wetting. And as you see here in the first example, it's the animation of a liquid bridge breakup where the droplet is placed on a hydrophobic uh, stripe, and you see a breakup of the liquid bridge. And there are a few more examples, such as rise electrostatic effects of the contact line when the droplet uh, slides across the surface. And uh, we tend to understand these local processes at the dynamic contact line and investigate uh, the contact line dynamics there. So in Collaborative Research Center 1194, subgroup B01, it's my group. And uh, we tend to simulate, uh, we tend to uh, 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 validate the fundamental experiments uh, of our colleagues that are present in CRC1194 by numerically, uh, uh, by numerical method that uh, simulates wetting processes of uh, uh, the wetting of complex surfaces, which includes the disc domain discretization using unstructured meshes. Uh, one example could be droplet spreading on a, uh, on a substrate with very small contact angles, uh, fast etching of uh, liquid bridges, and the contact line impact when it, uh, when it uh, impacts onto uh, any obstacle, any chemical obstacle, or either it would be a topographical obstacle. So what are the dynamics of the contact line when, it, when this kind of process happens? So we are, uh, we are investigating these kind of wetting processes. So you see the animation of the droplet spreading on a very flat surface. Here, the issue is like to capture the thin film that is present at the outside, outside rim of the droplet. Okay, to simulate these processes, I am using the interflow solver, which implies the uh, click RDF hazard vector method. Uh, the hazard vector vector method is, uh, it is based on a geometrical, plane polygon intersection. So in the image, as you see, there is a plick plane inside a control volume. And this plick, uh, uh, plick plane is propagated using the cell-centered velocity, uh, in the, as you see in the second image. And the, in the isoid vector method, it, uh, it geometrically calculates the uh, intersection of this plick element with each face of the control volume. And this gives the instantaneous uh, Face area submerged in in uh, one of the fluid, and which in turns gives us the face specific volume uh, flux across each face of the control volume, and which in turns gives us the uh, updated volume fraction values uh, within each time step. Uh, for interface reconstruction method, I'm using the plick RDF reconstruction method. Uh, it is an iterative method uh, which uh, reconstruct the sign distance field. Uh, in the tubular neighbor, neighborhood of the interface cells. And uh, uh, for, so for example, if we take this interface cell, uh, 
it it calculate it, it calculates the rdf in this interface cell by using the weight, uh, weights of the assigned distance uh, values present in the neighborhood of this cell and then the uh, least square finite volume gradient of this rdf function would give us the updated interface normals uh, in each cell so for wetting the uh, boundary treatment is very necessary and in this method uh, uh, we are extending we are extending the boundary cell so this is the boundary cell and this is a, uh, this is the wall so we extend the wall uh, virtually you would say by introducing a ghost cell xgc ghost point ghost point and a normal ngc such that uh, this dotted line would make uh, uh, would satisfy the contact angle boundary condition that we impose at the boundary so this theta would be the contact angle prescribed by the user in the boundary condition <laughs> and uh, this uh, plic rdf uh, we benchmark this plic rdf method uh, using different test cases for wetting so the first test case that i would present here is the interface admixture test my colleague mathis fricke he developed an ode uh, such that if so for a, for a flow trajectory if you if you know a velocity profile you can uh, evaluate the normal evolution and in turn you can evaluate the contact angle uh, evaluation how the contact angle evolves uh, with the velocity field so in this test case i am i am taking a, a droplet on a flat surface and i will use a, i am using a periodic boundary condition a periodic flow field uh, which uh, which uh, moves the interface in one direction and after uh, after a time period it will turn back and we can evaluate the shape error and uh, the contact angle evolution so the mesh connectivity for this test case is unstructured uh, but the mesh cell is uh, uniform uh, across all direction and you see uh, in the contact angle evolution so the black line here represents the analytical result from the ode solution presented in the pre previous slide and uh, all all these are the numerical solutions with the increase in the mesh resolution uh, in this direction and uh, this contact angle evolution uh, it converges with the first order and on the right hand side you see the uh, convergence of the geometric shape error uh, and if you are refined enough you you would get a second order convergence uh in the geometric shape area uh, the second test case i am presenting is the droplet spreading on a uh, on a horizontal surface and it has uh, two sub cases one is uh, the droplet spreading in the absence of gravity and the second is uh, in the presence of gravity so uh, and the gravity effect is incorporated inside the bond number so first one would be for bond number 0 and then i uh, uh, i have results for the range of bond number so uh, i initialize a droplet on a flat surface as you see here and uh, we know if if the droplet is spreading in uh, without any gravity then uh, we will get a spherical cap shape at the equilibrium and for, for the spherical cap shape we have geometrical relations that can pres uh, that can define the spherical cap shape and we can uh, then uh, compare our results with the geometrical relationships and here is a small animation for the droplet spreading is very fast so yeah so these are the geometrical relations e being the height of the spherical cap l is the wetted radius of the spherical cap and theta is the contact angle at the wall and b is the volume of the droplet and uh, in on this side i am presenting the Uh, droplet uh, wetted area for different mesh resolutions and yeah yeah numerical calculations are done uh, by the summation of uh, phase volume friction field uh, with the surface area normal vector uh, and yeah on on the left hand side you see the uh, you see the results for the uh, spherical cap height and the droplet radius for a range of uh, contact angles from 10 degrees to 170 degrees and on the left hand side you see the comparison of the equilibrium drop shapes uh, with the spherical cap shape uh, for the for the respective equi equilibrium contact angle 
and yeah as you see like there is a good agreement with the reference solutions but uh, for the very small contact angle for this test case i am using parabolic curvature model which is present in the two phase flow library and developed by professor johan and uh, henning and yeah but if if i use a uh, height function for this specific test case then the results are much better for the for a very small contact angle yeah, and uh, then for uh, for variable bond number uh, we know that uh, in the presence of gravity the droplet would uh, the, the droplet equilibrium would not be a spherical capture but it is suppressed droplet and it's called puddle and we have uh, its height uh, can be represented in terms of capillary length and the equilibrium contact angle. And here I am, I compared uh, for a range of bond number for two different uh, uh, liquids, water glycerol mixture and water. And you see like there is a very good uh, agreement with the reference solutions. Yeah, the third test case uh, is the droplet spreading on a spherical surface. So this is a solid sphere and I initialize a droplet on, on top of it. And, it, and this is also in, in the in absence uh, of gravity. So we expect to have a, a spherical cap shape uh, at the equilibrium. And uh, with this, we have the geometrical relationships and the volume conservation uh, equation. And this these relations can give us the uh, reference uh, geometrical shape at the equilibrium. And here for this test, I am comparing this contact radius and uh, this height at the equilibrium. Yeah, so this is the animation for the droplet spreading on the spherical surface. And the domain in this is discretized using the unstructured meshes. Yeah, so for you see uh, the results uh, for the uh, height, contact angle, uh, height, and the contact angle, radi uh, contact radius, and the equilibrium height for uh, and the, its comparison with the numerical results. And on the right hand side, you see the comparison of uh, the equilibrium shapes uh, with the spherical cap shape at the respective co uh, contact angle. And there is a very good agreement here also. But for this experiment, uh, uh, I need to detect the contact line position to compare the contact radius. But uh, view of methods, as we know, that uh, they can be very challenging in terms of uh, appearance of WISP cells. So WISP cells are the small interface cells that, that are present in uh, bulk phase. So this can uh, uh, this can uh, hinder our detection of the contact line. So this is uh, one difficulty that we face during this detection of the contact line and uh, the similar uh, difficulties uh, is also present when we detect the contact line uh, in this on the sliding droplets also yeah so one application which I, uh, so the, then i tried to uh, simulate the fast liquid bridge stretching and try to compare and investigate the asymmetry of the liquid bridge during the its fast stretching and the objective was to investigate the dynamics of the uh, liquid bridge stretch and its dependence on uh, the stretching acceleration and the liquid properties uh, or liquid properties and uh, yeah usually we have uh, two substrates for the bridge and then we like uh, stretch one of the substrate and to get the liquid bridge but in these simulations, uh, we model the lower substrate uh, as a, as a flow field by imposing a flow field in this portion. So this flow field will uh, give us the will give us the liquid bridge stretch, and then we compare the symmetry factor, which is just the ratio of the height of, from the neck radius from the necking point to the uh, position of the lower substrate and the upper substrate. And here you see the uh, uh, comparison uh, with experiments for two different velocity uh, for two different accelerations, and uh, you see like uh, at the small accelerations, uh, the asymmetry. Uh, when we increase the uh, acceleration, the symmetry factor is reversed. So it is very important in, uh, for example, medical fields 
such as uh, uh, drug deliveries where we where we are much concerned with the amount of liquid uh, uh, to be controlled uh, to deliver at a specific position so this and this was the application of this uh, cooperation with the experimental people and we also observed that the asym with increasing the viscosity of the liquid we observe uh, that uh, the asymmetry decreases yeah and with this i thank you i thank the jama research foundation and the crc 194 and listen back for the calculations thank you very much